Sweet. So yeah, we're just going to be running through basically like the basic tools within InDesign. Um, once you know the basics, you can do quite a lot. Um, and more just kind of how to lay out some images, how to add some text, and then some cool features that would make you want to use it rather than Google Slides. Um, so we're just going to go up to the top and click New File. Um, and for ours, we're going to click on Print. Um, if it's a digital submission, you can use web, but um, most of the time we end up printing out our documents. You want to click on View All Presets here and change it to A3. Um, move over to this side, and because we're in New Zealand, we want to be clicking on the millimeters for units. Um, and we're going to go for a landscape document as well. Um, the big difference, most of you probably opened the Photoshop file the same way. Um, the big difference in InDesign is that there's a thing here called facing pages. Um, so this pretty much means that if you want your document to work like a book or not. So books and magazines that have two pages that face each other, you want to turn this on. Um, for our case, we're going to turn it off for now. Um, so that just means that like one page comes after another. Um, I recommend if you're submitting stuff digitally, just turn off the facing pages. Um, it's only really useful if you're printing books, really. Um, and then for now, we're just going to leave our pages at one. Um, and then as you scroll down, we're not going to change any of this, but I'll kind of explain what it is anyway. Um, so this is the columns on your page. So this can be kind of good if you were to ever lay out a newspaper. Um, <laughs> and then margins is like the area around the outside of your page. Um, so we're just going to leave them as the preset. But um, if you do ever want to change those for some reason, that's there. Um, so once we've got all that, we just want to click Create. I'm going to click this. So it'll bring you into a page that looks pretty similar to all other Adobe um, softwares. So I'm just going to run through the like workspace a bit. Um, so on this side down here, you've got all your tools. Um, including like the selection to be the most common. Um, and then at the top, you've got all the what are these, what are these we called? menus. Yeah, so um, file, edit, layout, object, table, um, and a variety of things. And then like other Adobe programs as well, you've got the same documents tab. So that kind of works like the tabs in Chrome or like a browser. Um, so if you're working on lots of files at the same time, they all kind of appear up here. Um, we've just got one, so there's only one at the moment. Um, on this side, you've got your properties window. Um, and then a big dis difference in InDesign is you can change what all of this looks like. So for this tutorial, if you go up to here next to the share button, we want to swap this to printing and proofing. It just gives you more options. Um, this is more of a preference thing than anything. This is the one that I use, so I'm going to give the tutorial on this. Um, but if you have any problems changing this, um, put your hand up now. You can see as well that it's got um, sort of preset workspaces. Um, you can also, if you want to, click on like new workspace and make your own, but don't do that now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's kind of recommended layouts for doing different things. Sweet. Sweet. So to zoom as well, you can either go control minus on your keyboard, um, or you've got the little hand tool or H to kind of move your page back and forth. Um, or you can use the scroll wheel on the mouse and move your pages around. So the other difference compared to InDesign documents um, and others is this area called the workspace. So this is like the gray area around the side of your document. Um, so this area kind of, it won't get printed if you were to print your document, but it's a good area where you can kind of like leave things almost. Um, you'll see how it works later. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is add a few pages into our document. Um, so you, 
now that we've got this up here, you want to go over to the right hand side and click on the pages here. You'll notice at the moment we've just got one. Um, so just go down to the bottom and there's a little plus icon. And we're going to click until we've got three. Sweet. Um, so these pages here, if you also want to say move the page, you can kind of click and drag it around like you would, um, I guess, a Google Slides document as well. Um, for some reason, you do, we're not going to, but if you do want to delete the page, um, there's a little trash bin icon next to the plus as well. Um, sweet. So, the thing that we're going to do is go. up here and make sure that you've got the second page selected. And what we're going to do is make some guides on our page um, so that then we can easily lay out like some images and text in a more precise and arranged way. Um, so you want to go up to layout and click create guides. So this comes up with a rows and um, so the rows goes up and down, the columns go across, um, and we're going to go for two rows and two columns. And then for this tutorial, just make sure that the bottom part fit guides to page um, rather than margins. The gutter as well is the that you'll see in a minute is like the space in between. Um, so if I click OK. The gutter is the sort of gap between these little blue lines. Sweet. So an important thing to note with this is that the was created this way um, won't control the flow of your text. So if you're typing, they won't stop where the blue line is. Um, they're more just guides. These also won't get printed. Um, they're purely there just for like your layout purposes, really. Um, a helpful thing to use in InDesign is pressing W on your keyboard. So that will kind of bring up and take away, um, I guess, sort of like working views, which we've got now, and then what will actually get printed. Um, so you can kind of combine the two as the tutorial goes on. Oh, yep. So you want to go up to layout and then click on create guides. And then for this tutorial, we're going for two rows and columns. So we end up with a grid of four um, with a gutter of five mil in between. And we want to fit them to the page. So that means that essentially it's like proportional to the page. Um, you can do it to the margins as well, which would mean that it's fitted inside that sort of pink line that you see. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go page. And then just click OK. Sweet. Cool. So the next thing we're gonna do is insert page um, into our like document basically. So um, InDesign works in a way that's called links. So it's essentially looking for in your computer um, the really good thing about this is that as you update things in your computer, you can update them straight away in InDesign rather than having to replace the whole um, That's probably the biggest benefit compared to other layout programs. So say you're working on a Photoshop file, you can put the Photoshop file into InDesign, um, go back to it, keep working on it, save it, and then it'll re-update itself in your InDesign document. Um, so yeah, we'll. So I'll show you how to place like a basic JPEG and then um, how to place an actual Photoshop file as well. Um, so to do that, you just want to go up to File and click Place. And then go into the Scratch Disk 2024 DRH Tutorials and click on the InDesign one. 
and then just select the base map and click open. Um, and for now, just plonk it right in the middle of the page. Sweet. Um, a thing, good thing to note as well that pasting images into InDesign is really not recommended. Um, it, because of the way InDesign works in links, um, there's the risk that it'll essentially like lose the copy and paste because it's not downloaded into your computer. Um, so I guess you can do it, but beware. <laughs> it might sort of um, either like heavily decrease in quality or I guess go missing. Um, if you don't want things to be linked, so um, you don't want it to automatically update, you can add um, images into InDesign. That's also not really recommended, mostly because it makes your file size really, really big. Um, so yeah, that's kind of just a side note, I guess. Um, so we're going to now make this image fit into one corner of our document. Um, so we want to go up to the selection tool or press B on your keyboard. Select the image and drag it over to the top. You'll notice as well that if you say try to resize this image like you would in Word, like this, or any other like layout software you're probably more familiar with, um, it actually crops the image. It doesn't resize it. So what you want to do is press Control Shift, um, and that will proportionally resize your image. If you double image as well it'll bring up what's referred to as the brown box um, and that is the size of your actual image if you want to do it in a more way. so you end up with two bits the frame of the image which is the blue line and then the actual image which when you double click on it is the brown box. and then to move both together which is the most common Thing you often want to do. Just want to select, press Control, Shift, and slide them both together. So you can kind of play around with how that works, but to get used to. Um, but yeah. See when you have your image selected and you're hovering over it, this sort of little circle thingy appears in the middle, um, and a hand. So that you can move the image within your. So, yeah, we're not going to do that, but um, that's basically how to. So, move it back as well. Um, the benefit of this is that it helps you keep your document really tidy. Um, all your images can like really nicely line up. Um, things can be made the same size. Probably like wondering a bit why there's so many ways of resizing it at the moment. Um, but it helps you sort of keep everything lined up and the same size. So to make this image actually fit the size we want it to, we're going to press Control Shift and pull it out until it snaps onto that grid at that size there. And then we're going to take the frame and pull it in so it fits in there. Sweet. Does anyone have any issues at the moment? Okay, cool. So now we're going to add some text next to this image. Um, so we want to go over here and click on the text tool. And like making an image, drag it fills out that whole area there. And then Type whatever you want inside your text box. And adjust all your text with it highlighted at the top um, are all the normal properties of like operating text. So you've got font, um, whether it's still or bold, you can increase the size of it um, if you want to sort of make the distance between the two bit better um, and 
color of the text as well is over here. So let's say we wanted to make our text red and click on the little T um, and change it to red or plain. Um, and then you've also got the way that the text is arranged in the text box. So um, if we wanted to sort of like center align it, um, there's various other different alignments as well. But, um, so we're just going to keep it on this side for now. Sweet. So that's pretty much like the super, super, super basics. Um, and now I'm going to show you a real cool way of basically adding your Photoshop file into your InDesign document and then keeping it updated. Um, that's probably the most beneficial aspect of InDesign is its connection with other programs. Um, so to do that, we just want to open up Photoshop. And then we just want to go up to New File. We're going to go for Print. A4. I'm going to keep this one portrait um, and then change this to centimeters. Change the color to CMYK. So the difference between RGB Okay, um, CMYK is the colors that are, I guess, better read by the printer. Um, so RGB is um, used for documents that like you'll be viewing on screen. So it makes the colors vibrant on screen. But if you were to print it out, they would come out a lot duller. Um, CMYK, it means that you're working in a closer version to what will be printed. Um, so we're just going to click Create. Um, we did have an earlier Photoshop tutorial as well. so that will be uploaded if you want more details of how to do that. Um, and we're just going to make a really simple design in Photoshop. So going over to the paintbrush tool, um, I'm just going to make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm just going to draw a really lovely flower. You can really draw whatever you want for this, to be honest. It's more just showing you how to get a Photoshop file into InDesign. Just need something on your page. <laughs> Sweet. Does anyone have any issues with that? So now we've got an absolutely stunning design. Um, <laughs> we want to go over to File and save our document. And because we're putting it into InDesign, we can actually leave it as a PSD. Um, however, I would recommend if you're doing a really long document to save things as JPEGs, um, just to make basically PSDs are bigger in file size. And so if you're doing a like 60 page portfolio and you're trying to put in like 50 different photos, it'll get really slow and really laggy. Um, so for this, we'll leave it as PSD, but yeah, just sort of be warned. <laughs> um, I'm just going to call mine flower. And save it either, probably just to the downloads. Now we've got our Photoshop file. We want to go back to InDesign. And the same way we place the map, go to File, or Control D on your keyboard. And then find the um, Photoshop file that you just saved. So we just want to click Open. And place. You see 
because we made our document in A4, um, it's automatically brought it in at an A4 size. So this is a really good way to make sure your um, drawings are the same size as they should be. Um, so I'm just going to move mine up here. Pop off some white space a little bit. Arrange it at the bottom. Using all the tools you learned before. Sweet. Does everyone have their drawings into their document? Cool. So now I've got my page, um, but I actually want to add something to this flower. So we can go back to Photoshop and add something to your drawing. So I'm going to add a little center. And then it's really important that you save after this as well. So just press Control S or you can go up to File and press Save. Sweet. So if really important that you save after the step or the next part won't work. Sweet. So going back to Envy, you'll now notice that our flower is not what we just drew. Um, but there's also like a little traffic warning. Um, so the warning basically is saying that this image has been modified. Designs notice that you've made changes to it. Um, and what's being shown isn't the most recent. Um, of what you've done. Um, so to update, what you have to do is click on that and your new changes will appear like magic. Um, <laughs> so this is a really fast way to work between um, Yeah, it basically means this also works with um, Illustrator documents as well for the like planners who might be using that. Um, but it allows you to kind of work between the programs and not have to re-upload your image every single time you've changed something super, super small. Um, yeah, so links are like really beneficial thing as well, um, but they can also go wrong. So things can become what's called unlinked. Um, so that kind of means that essentially InDesign's lost its connection to the file. Um, so a really good practice to work, because we're on uni computers, it's a little bit difficult. The really good practice is to put all your files that are going into the InDesign file on folder. Um, you'll notice that if, say, I go onto here and rename my document flower2, it'll come up with more aggressive warning. <laughs> And that means that your link is now down. Um, so when you first put it into InDesign, this file had the name flower and it was in your downloads. Um, so now InDesign is looking for the file named flower that's in the downloads, but there's nothing there. Um, so it's coming up and saying that it's missing. This basically means that when you go to print, you might lose really um, important, like I guess the quality of your image might go down quite a lot. Um, but it also means that you've kind of lost the ability to keep updating it. Um, so it is really important to keep your links linked. Um, if for some reason you do decide that your file needs to be renamed, um, you can relink your image by clicking on the little warning, going to the down, clicking on the file that you just changed the name of and pressing open. Um, the same thing will also happen if, I don't think I can do it because I'm on a uni computer here, if you move the file around, so if you move it from folder to folder, um, the link will also become missing. So that's why it's really important to keep like an all space. Um, I often will have a file on my computer that's purely just all the files that are going into the InDesign um, to keep everything organized. And yeah, sweet. So um, another cool thing you can do in InDesign is we've got multiple pages um, but sometimes you have things that want to go over you want to appear on every single page um, so it might be like 
or of your document like 2024 portfolio or your name or something um so InDesign has something what's called master pages and that's basically like a sort of preset page um so you notice when the pages panel we've got this one that's called none and then a parent a parent is the master page so anything that is placed on a parent um gets applied with that so to edit it you just want to double and it'll bring up just one page um, so we're going to add some text and put name so we're just going to go back to that text tool we and in the top corner of our document make a text box and I'm going to put my name So this could also be something like your eye or um, just anything really that you want to appear on every page through the document. Um, it's really especially useful when doing books and you've got things like headers and footers. Um, and yeah, there's quite a lot you can do with these. So now if you click out of the master page and just back to normal page one, my name has been put at the top in the exact same spot on every single page. Um, you will notice though that the page we placed the map on, um, you can't see. So the master page is automatically applied to the bottom of your document. So it, everything automatically ends up sort of locked as like a base layer. Um, and say on our first page, we don't want our name to appear. You can then click on this page that says none and drag it over the top and it'll place the master page settings onto that page. Um, I'm not going to explain it now, but there is ability to create multiple master pages as well. So if you want things applied to just like five pages in the middle of your document, there's quite a lot you can do with them. And the benefit is that you don't have to literally copy and paste, you know, your UPI all the way through your document. Um, and it keeps it same spot every time. Cool. Um, so I'm going to show you a real like helpful hack that lots of my friends don't even know still. I showed them the other day. Um, you'll notice that if I start typing some words that um, really are not English, InDesign doesn't have a spell check. Um, so this can kind of be a little bit like catch you out. Um, it's not like Word, it won't tell you if the spelling is off. But if you do want it, like, you can highlight your text, right click, go to spelling, and check spelling. Um, it's a little bit clunky, but here you can run through the spelling, um, and it'll give suggestions as to what your spelling should be. So I click have very good grammar and didn't put a capital letter after my exclamation mark so it's telling me to correct that and I can just click change um, and it's picking up on the text that I put in that is in English. You can either skip or ignore them um, it's just a helpful hack instead of copying your text back into something like Word and then back into InDesign. Um, as much as I wish that it did pick up on the spelling to begin with um, sadly it doesn't. <laughs> Sweet. So kind of like all the really basic stuff of InDesign. Um, one thing that will catch you out is if you're working in group projects and using InDesign, um, you won't be able to adjust the InDesign file because of the links. So if you sent just the InDesign file and your friend opened it, everything's going to be missing because they don't have all the files um, that are the links in the doc, um, which can be kind of annoying and sort of I guess people think that they can't work in groups and share in design files, um, but you can, you just have to export them in a little bit of a different way. Go to file and go right down and click package. So it's just above the printing. It'll bring up a big sort of thing here. We just want to click on package. Click save. Oh, I haven't saved my file. 
And what this will do is package your entire document with all the links into a folder. Um, so this means that they send the entire folder to your friend and when they open it, it'll all, that document will automatically have all the links needed um, and you won't have to send them, I guess, separate illustration design, oh, sorry, separate illustrator and Photoshop documents um, and an InDesign and go through the problem of things not being linked. Um, yeah, I'm not going to put it out because it can be quite a big file, but um, it's quite helpful to know, um, especially when trying to work with other people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so the other benefit of using links um, is that it, because it's, I guess, linking to your image rather than like pulling in the whole, um, it makes your file size a lot smaller and workable. Um, so the compression is just overall a lot better. If you were to, say, put in like images into something like Word or another program, um, you'll often notice that it gets really slow and like your image's quality goes down and stuff. Um, but because this is more linking to the file rather than the direct thing, um, yeah, it sort of maintains quite a low file size and makes your documents just more workable and easier to hand in on canvas. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of all the basics. Um, but if you have any questions or want to know about anything that I've explained, um, yeah, please ask now. <laughs> so like, what a lot of students do is actually like, you know how the page has A3 size. What a lot of students do is they make the um ratio the same as the printout board, like the one that like that's like as tall as you. Just make it as that. And like, you might think, oh, that's like. And this, surely the program can't handle it. But actually they can because the compression function is so effective. So then um, when you make the canvas the exact like one-to-one -one size, you can just exactly what drawings you can put on top and plan your whole print up that way. If you want to do a poster print, like, I don't know, go to warehouse station and print the whole thing out, you can just send them that whole yeah. So it just makes everything one place. Um, it updates itself and yeah, very efficient. We'll also add a note as well that um, as much as you do full drawings in InDesign, there are some of the similar tools to Illustrator on the side. So you still do have things like the rectangle um, and circle and stuff. So if you do just want to make one shape here and there um, without having to make like an Illustrator document look sort of a red square, um, they these are all just located in the toolbar. Um, we did an Illustrator tutorial last week that kind of covers how all those work. It's the same, like, similar situation. Um, but, yeah, if you're just sort of having a few things, it can be more useful to just do it there. So, like, obviously this tutorial doesn't cover everything that InDesign has to offer, but what it does give you is the language vocabulary to search things up. Like, now you know what links are, then you can search up, like, what's a link window? How do I do missing links? You know, all the other functions that you can unlock because you know the name of it now. Um, that's kind of like what the tutorial is intended to do.